I love clay um, as a material and as a medium. It is um, strangely compelling, I think, for those of us who have spent time working in it and um, looking at it for a long time. There's something very unique about the artists who choose to work in this medium. My name's Kristen Poole and I'm the Artistic Director at the Sun Valley Center for the Arts and also the curator for this exhibition. The exhibition, Define Gravity, Interventions in, in Clay, has been a project that I have been sort of stewing on for a number of years. And what I found was a group of artists, none of them are afraid to push beyond what they imagine is possible. They um, have to have a curious balance of a willingness and a desire to work with material that's usually fle flexible, that is malleable, that's really yummy, that can take many, many forms, and then simultaneously, they have to be willing to let go. I'm really, really curious to the relationship that we have as humans to the objects, objects in our lives, objects that we choose to live with, and the memories that they carry. They're also working in other mediums, primarily drawing. Bill O'Brien is an artist from um, the Chicago area. Clay, for him, is this sort of vulgar, rude material that can be manipulated and into these very absurd and wonderful and hugely heavy and exaggerated forms. He says he has a no restraint policy. When he makes work, he keeps pushing, pushing, pushing. So in every single one of these objects in here, you'll see these faces that are absurd and he adds big loops and gloppy round things and his marks are gestural and scrapey. So there's an aggression about the pieces. For him, the, the pots become this, this conflation of that history as well as his contemporary desire to make marks. One of the other elements that links these artists together that is attractive to me is their playfulness. And um, Bill O'Brien is not afraid to play. He's not afraid to exaggerate. He's not afraid to make the forms just a little bit absurd. The other artist in the exhibition that also uses playfulness really clearly is Linda Lopez. Linda's the youngest of the bunch. She's only been doing it for a short period of time, but she creates these wonderful still lives that include these sort of moppy, droopy clay forms, and you want to pick them up. They look soft and like they're going to change their form at any moment, but they're, that's the wonderful piece about it is that they're rigid and they're hard, but they look so inviting. Even though they're fun and they're playful, they are very formally and intentionally presented. She wants you to make up your own story about why this cactus is sitting on this rock next to this letterbox, next to this floppy thing. What is that floppy thing? You tell your story. Annabeth Rosen is probably the senior person in this show. She's been working in clay for a really long time, and she is the spirit of the show in many ways for me because she makes work and then she remakes work and she fires the pieces and they explode and she reassembles them and she refires them and she glazes and she reglazes them and she's constantly pushing. She's trying to constantly understand what does it mean to control this medium and how do you not control it. She is fierce in her determination to understand the material. And so she creates these very beautiful objects that again, have no direct relationship to something that we know in our life. They're abstract forms essentially, but they take on this sort of suggestion of snail or wave or ziggurat or um, some sort of form that I feel like if I come in the next morning, it's gonna be something different. It has the possibility of being something new. Really all five of the sculptural pieces in the show are essentially the same form, but they each feel really different and beautiful, beautiful, beautiful surfaces. Alwyn O'Brien was here for a week and um, spent the majority of the week drawing on the walls. She came to clay through printmaking and was really interested in the material of clay as it related to being able to stain. And when she was fooling around with different print mediums, she 
drew a small coil of clay, a very, very narrow, thin, pencil-like, even thinner than that, coil of clay, and stuck it on the wall to make a mark, to make a line. And she assumed the clay would fall apart, fall off, and just leave that stain. And what she realized was that she was really attracted to this sort of this three-dimensional way of drawing and telling the story with this um, very um, heavy, thick material. And so this was a new way of thinking about clay and a new way of thinking about drawing for her. All wind ceramic pieces are these beautiful, elegant, lacy, open sculptures that have at their core this notion of a vessel. And vessels hold things. Vessels hold objects, they hold memory, they hold tradition. And she's very aware of that. But Alwyn's vessels are busting out. They're exploding all over. They look as if they were one form and they're emerging into another form, as if they sort of, they're out of control. And some of them intentionally look like they're in distress or they're hinging on chaos. We're constantly a society that's building beautiful, beautiful things. We're desiring more and more things. It compels us to build more. It also compels destruction and dissolution. So it is that tension in her work that is super attractive and that sort of sense that you want to tiptoe around them is a good thing because there is this conversation going on about collapse and about the nature of entropy and the nature of desire and longing. All of that in some ceramic vessels. It's a really beautiful grouping of four artists, all quite different, but all connected in their desire to push and in their desire to express through a medium um, something more, something new, something a little bit different. I hope you enjoy it.